Thank you for the invitation to share on the panel of the GYA conference on higher education institutions' response to the COVID-19 situation. Um, let me first share what is the situation in Malaysia, and I will give also a, a brief introduction to the situation in Southeast Asia and, and our neighboring countries. Uh, in Malaysia, uh, the government has, has issued the a circular that says that all teaching and learning activities to be held online until end of 2020. However, five groups of students have been given exemption and they are allowed to go back into campus. Um, and these are the students uh, comprising of who are doing their, who are research postgraduate students, who especially those who have to work in laboratories for their research. Uh, the second group are final year students, undergraduate students who are currently doing their final year projects as well as for students who have difficulty to access uh, internet, uh, so they can actually request to go back to campus to, for, so that they have the infrastructure for them to continue their teaching and learning uh, activities online. Uh, the fourth group of students that are allowed to go back are those with specific needs, especially those in the technical and vocational education, those who have to go back to their studios or have to um, or their courses involve or in require them to have face-to-face -face interaction uh, and cannot be fully done online so these are the this is the fourth group of students that is allowed to go back and the fifth group of students are those who are the new students that is going to come in for the new academic year beginning in in october so these are the five group of students who are allowed to go back to campus but all teaching and learning activities across both public and private institutions is to be held online until the end of the year. As in regards to the situation in Southeast Asia, in our neighboring countries, and also uh, the, uh, in the region, I would, I would recommend to refer to a special issue that was published in a, uh, in a periodical by this head foundation. It's called the Higher Education in Southeast Asia and Beyond. This is a special issue on the COVID-19 situation. And in this special issue, you are able to read on the situation and the ways in which countries such as Brunei, Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, as well as across the ASEAN region, and also countries in the neighboring and the neighboring countries to Southeast Asia include Australia, India, China, Hong Kong, and South Korea. So the special issue actually covers a very uh, wide range of countries in this part of the world in terms of how higher education institutions and the universities respond or are resp currently responding to the COVID-19 situation as a form of one of the most disruptive pandemic that we have seen in recent years. In terms of the challenges, I shall describe this with um, in two different areas. One of them is with the, the whole concept of online learning. In a way, we have been forced to shift in, in a rather uh, abrupt way into online learning. Um, the situation with online learning is much more than just having our lectures or our tutorials online. It's much more than having someone give a lecture over Zoom and, and having a couple of, of discussions in, in through whatever forms of communication that we have. I think the fundamental that has need with, that we need to be aware of is that the shift to online learning requires a, a complete change of uh, our mindset and entirely also the pedagogy behind what higher education is all about. If we look at the history of, of development of higher education in many of our countries, we realize that there has always been a different kind of institutions that is in our system called the open universities. It's a, it would be a, a huge discredit to colleagues in these universities who spend their career to develop a different form of curriculum and also the different form and approach to teaching in higher education that is specifically developed and catered for people to learn through correspondence, through long-distance correspondence, as well as through online in, in recent years. 
And to say that most universities are able to do that and by just putting up our lectures and our tutorials online would be, in, in a way, uh, I would say, as, as a form of um, disrespect to the effort of, of that online people who have spent their careers and efforts to develop courses online with its own um, form of pedagogy and also the basic fundamentals of higher education would be very different from merely just putting our materials online. At the same time, this whole uh, COVID-19 situation has also presented a huge challenge in, to the students. Uh, it has clearly shown uh, and, and widened the disparity between those who have and those who do not have. Uh, in, access to internet remains a problem, even in, in Malaysia and also in many other countries. Although we can say that we all have internet access. For example, in Malaysia, the internet access penetration is about 70%. But bear in mind that the bandwidth and the connection needed for a, 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 a whole range of uh, learning activities online required a different kind of bandwidth and a different kind of connection. It's not as simple as just uh, the, the connection and the bandwidth we need for um, watching some video clips or, or, or messaging. So internet connectivity remains to be a problem, especially in our situation where students are not in campus, they are back home into their own respective places. Some are in the city, some are in the urban areas where uh, access to internet, uh, and in this case, access to internet with the capability for them to continue uh, learning, teaching and learning activities online would uh, present a huge challenge. And the fact that many of the students, universities now that they can't be in the campus, has also um, revealed another challenge is that the challenge to infrastructure, many of them do not even have uh, I have colleagues whose students do not even have a laptop back home and they, are, they, are, they now have to rely on just their mobile phone to access uh, the materials for online learning and imagine having to write an essay over a mobile phone and that is a huge disadvantage to students who do not have access to some of this technology or gadgets that enable them to do so. Uh, and this has clearly widened the disparity between those who, who initially have the capability, the financial support and the resources to excel and those who are now, although they are in higher education, but they do not have that kind of support and resources. And this whole situation by moving to online where institutions are not able to, to facilitate and support those who do not have the resources to now continue with their uh, learning and also education uh, adequately uh, when they are now back home and when we have moved everything online when they are no more in campus. So these are two main challenges that needs to be mindful of as we think about it's not so simple as just moving uh, the teaching and learning online, but these are the two major challenges that um, I think is confronting the higher education institutions the academics and also students. As to ways to get around it, at the moment, um, that's, for example, in my own university, what we have done is to reach out to students who do not have access of this um, and lecturers have to then download the videos or the assignments um, and, and use uh, to, to send it to them through a USB uh, stick in the form of or CD and send it to them so that they can at least have some access to um, some um, very basic uh, lectures online, um, in audio clips and so on and so forth. But these are really short-term measures, stopgap measures that if this whole online teaching and learning is to prolong beyond this couple of months, this is going to present a huge challenge in terms of how higher education institutions and universities is to operate uh, in the long term, in an online manner. So to the traditional universities that still rely predominantly on the face-to-face -face interaction, this is one serious question that the institutions and the academics have to grapple with. In the post-pandemic 
Are we going to go back to the same way of how we have been running our courses, how we have been teaching our students, uh, and how are we going to change after this uh, in that situation? And how adaptable is the academics and the, and the universities going to be in that, that situation? And on the second aspect of um, the function of universities in terms of the research, this pandemic has forced many laboratories to be closed because of uh, lockdown and, and so on and so forth. Um, but more importantly is the question of what is the role of research in the university and how is it moving uh, to engage the society to play that role to solve the challenge that is confronting us. Where are the universities in response to the whole COVID-19 situation? and the whole lockdown situation. And these are some of the issues that I believe the universities in the post-pandemic environment needs to seriously rethink and refocus itself in terms of the research and also the engagement with society in terms of how to move forward as the kind of higher education institutions and university for the future. Thank you.